Hello and welcome to another edition of Exploring Different Brains. I'm Dr. Hacky Reitman, and today we're talking to someone all the way from Australia. How's that for a Jersey City, Australian accent? <laughs> it's Sarah Collins, who's the founder of Autism C-A-E-R, Autism Care. And uh, she's a mom of four children, three of whom have autism. Welcome to the show, Sarah. Thank you so much. Introduce yourself to our, to our audience, Sarah, if you could. Okay, so um, I've got a background in education and uh, business and um, was working as an instructional designer um, when I had my first child. Um, right from the start, uh, there were a few difficulties uh, that we experienced and as he got older, um, it became more apparent that there was something else going on. Um, so fast forward a few years and we've got a diagnosis and um, we've now got four children. Um, our fourth child is actually in the process of getting a diagnosis also. Um, yeah, my eldest is now eight. I've got a, a six-year-old, a five-year-old and the youngest is two. So it's fairly hectic in our household. <laughs> <laughs> I can well imagine. I can well imagine. And, and uh, what was your introduction into the world of neurodiversity? Um, we've got a few extended family members who are um, on the autism spectrum. They, they introduced me to neurodiversity. Um, it probably wasn't until I had children um, that were diagnosed and I got to understand them better, that I actually started to understand more about neurodiversity. So, um, yeah, so that's been uh, how I've learnt, learnt about it. <laughs> so you're networking in Australia with leaders in the field to try to get the community going. Uh, tell me how that's evolved. Um, well, the thing that I noticed was... Um, as I went to the parent support networks and uh, meetings and things, that a lot of the issues that we were experiencing, many families were experiencing. When we went out into the community, um, where, where it'd be sporting events or um, church churches or whatever it was, we needed to explain to people what autism was. And when we spoke to people and said, look, our children have autism, um, people would generally say, oh, yes, autism, okay, that's good, I'm sure they'll be fine, um, but didn't actually ask any further questions. And the thing that I guess stood out to me was while autism um, is – a lot of people have heard the term autism. There may not be a deeper understanding that it is a spectrum and it changes from individual to individual. And, um, you know, every brain is different, I guess. So just because somebody has a diagnosis doesn't mean that people understand how, how to care for somebody, um, how to make sure that they're included. Um, and so further questions need to be need to be asked. So um, we weren't the only family that were experiencing this. And I guess it's struck me that every family seems to be almost teaching the people that they came across. You know, so you had to develop leadership there in Australia. And, yeah. Uh, how did you go about that? Just going around talking to people and meeting people? and For the past number of years, uh, three years I think we're up to now, um, I've been doing training for um, an organisation called FSG Australia and they provide uh, care for people, uh, whether it be respite or if if um, individuals need to be relinquished from families, they provide homes um, that uh, with carers in there. So um, 
obviously the range of needs that they come across is great. So they get trainers in to talk about the various different um, needs. And uh, so I would come in and, and train um, their carers on autism and help to bring a, a broader understanding. Yeah. And how is, how's the reception been there in Australia? People have been friendly about this? Yeah, and... really positive. Oh, that's um, great. Generally, people want want to be able to embrace, embrace everyone. <laughs> but um, sometimes, yeah, there's uncertainty about how to do that. So, well, yeah, and, they, you know, people yeah. are nervous when they're ignorant. When I say ignorant, yeah. I mean like I myself was. When my daughter... Mm. Uh, who had 23 brain tumors and two major brain surgeries, but was earning her discrete mathematics degree at Georgia Tech when I knew she had some ADHD and some memory deficits, but, and she's maybe a quote, a little bit different, but you know, she's getting along. And uh, when she went to intern, the owner of the school there met her for 10 minutes and said, you know, your daughter, Rebecca, has Asperger's also. And I said, mm. what's that? Well, it's on mm. the spectrum of autism. And I said, what's that? <laughs> so I think it's on us to educate people so that they're more comfortable with it. Yeah. My desire is to be able to work with more with business um, so that um, businesses understand and um, owners of businesses and um, yeah, understand more about autism and, yeah. How does the educational system down in Australia approach things? Yeah, so in Australia, um, we do have uh, what's special schools, they call them. Um, they're more aimed towards people with intellectual impairment. Generally speaking, um, they're looking at inclusion into our schools. Um, so they're in the classrooms um, and they have additional support there um, through um, special ed units. Um, and, yeah, they work with, with the students to help incorporate um, everybody in the classroom. So so it's more in mainstreaming them than having yeah, separate... Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your, your children. Okay. Okay. Um, so Joshua, he he's my eldest. He's eight. Um, he is incredibly um, imaginative. He he loves uh, building things. He likes to know how things work. Um, he loves his Minecraft, <laughs> and um, he's into plants versus zombies at the moment. So yeah, if ever anyone meets him and doesn't know what to talk to him about, he can talk for hours <laughs> on those things. <laughs> um, yes. Um, so we have to figure out how to harness those interests and figure out how he can make a living at it and he'll never work a day in his life. <laughs> yes, that's right. So, yeah, I think he would make an excellent engineer or builder or something along those lines. <laughs> sure. I think we in society tend to spend so much time trying to say, well, why don't you do what everyone else is doing instead yeah. of developing what they love doing, you know? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And um, certainly it doesn't hurt to be able to think outside the box. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think they're very good at that. Um, Erin is um, my next oldest and she's six and she's incredibly artistic and loves loves anything crafty um she could do that for hours she um she's a very kind-hearted little girl um loves people loves um looking out for for others so and she yeah likes she's art. she likes art yeah art yes you know we interviewed yeah. uh, if you want to check it out sometime at different brains Michael Tolleson, we did an interview I with. I saw that one. Oh, man, he is really something. And it just goes to show, I mean, just he loves art. And he's so, yeah. you know, good. But he's not going to do it the same way everyone else does it. And yeah. nor should he be required to. It was a request for a long time um, at bedtime that I teach my daughter to write because she would love to write books. 
and um, and illustrate them. And it was like um, probably not at bedtime, but that's well, maybe she could work. illustrate one I'm working on. Maybe she could do that. <laughs> maybe we'll work something out. You know, with this yeah. modern technology, it doesn't matter. She's in Australia. Yeah, that's right. Is it true the water goes the other way around in the toilet <laughs> there? I mean, what's the story? Our audience I'm wants sure. to know. Which way does it go when you flush the toilet? <laughs> they do have toilets in Australia, don't they? Oh, we do. And they're now inside their houses. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tell you, you know, uh, I, um, I played rugby for 11 years up in Boston. Yeah. And uh, the Australian teams used to come over and just whoop us so bad. It wasn't even a contest. It was, I'm telling you. When uh, the, the, so that's uh, Aaron and uh, yep. Josh and now there's Kaylee. So um, yeah, Kaylee's quite artistic too. She likes um, likes her drawing and uh, writing. Um, so she's yeah, she's five. So she's she's a little bit younger. So the youngest is Zoe. Zoe's two. What um, great names! That's <laughs> a great name. Sounds like a novel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Zoe's two and she's just a ball of energy. She's a very happy little girl, um, loves animals, um, loves singing. Um, she doesn't talk very much. She's uh, She probably has about five words <laughs> to her repertoire, but um, she's, yeah, for not being able to speak very much, she, uh, she certainly does communicate very well. <laughs> She finds a ways. You have a background in instructional design yourself. Yeah. Um, would you say that in that field you've experienced some people whose brains are rather different in that area? Yeah, as an instructional designer, I would work with uh, teachers from all sorts of uh, different um, subject areas. I would work with um, multimedia developers with um, graphic designers um, and sort of bring all that all that um, expertise together to be able to put on um, to develop online resources uh, courses uh, some print-based resources and definitely um, yeah you would come across a, a big range of of personalities and um, yeah, and different abilities. So yeah, most definitely. Yeah. And what does your husband do? Uh, he's a phys ed teacher. Oh. So yeah, so he's so head it's great. Of you live across from the park. Everybody's in good shape. <laughs> it's a healthy lifestyle. Yeah, well, that was the thing that drew him to the to the house. He was like, yeah, the house is not that great, but check out the park. <laughs> <laughs> Now, what does C A E R stand for, and how do you pronounce it? Care, autism care. Um, yeah, autism care. Uh, it stands for community acceptance, um, education, and resources. So, um, I wanted, yeah, I wanted a name sort of to represent what I, what I wanted to do. I wanted to bring um, an acceptance, you know educate people about what autism is, um, how we can work together to be more inclusive of people, um, regardless of what their, their difficulties are, but specifically, I guess, um, around autism um, and some of the, the differences that some people have. And then to be able to uh, provide training where training's required, um, and resources as well. What would you say in Australia is the biggest limiting factor for those of us whose brains are somewhat different? Because I know you have probably limited knowledge of how it is here in America, and I have yeah. very limited knowledge of what's going on in Australia. Yeah, at the moment, I mean, I think most people have heard of autism um, in Australia. There's probably not a great depth of understanding. It's funny how many times um, I take my children somewhere or I'm talking to somebody and uh, they say, oh, my my um, brother-in-law's cousin has a child with autism, so I know what you're 
what you're talking about. So maybe not an understanding of how diverse the spectrum can be. Where do you feel that uh, people are really missing the boat about autism, if, if you do feel they are? In other words, um, what's one, one thing that you think that maybe the average person just doesn't get, that you get, that they don't get? Yeah, I guess for a number of people, um, you know, it's uh, looking at things um, at movies like Rain Man and um, seeing some of those sorts of, um, you know, portrayals of what an autistic person looks like. Um, and then they see, you know, some happy kids running around. They seem happy, a bit manic, but, you know, happy and and want to engage with people and want to, um, you know, interact. And they, there's this disconnect, you know. How can this person have the same diagnosis as what I've seen in this movie? And um, so not actually understanding that, you know, there's a lot of diversity on that spectrum, you know, and, yeah, and each person, you know, is an individual. They, you know, um, even, you know, looking at neurotypical people, as you've said before, you know, there's a lot of diversity and we all have our strengths and our weaknesses. You know, it's always relationships first. You know, who is this person? Um, you know, what sort of struggles do they have? Yeah, how can we support them? I think that's very well said. When you've met one autistic person, you've met one autistic person. And that that's right. stereotyping and labeling for for anything is uh, it's seductive because it makes things easy. And in certain times you need labels, but mm. I think it's a lousy way to describe a human being, you know, a unique individual yeah. human being. Yeah. Uh, how do you see the employment issues in Australia for people whose brains are a bit different? For some people, they really struggle to to be able to hold down a job um, <clears throat> where, you know, the expectation may be that um, you need to have strengths in so many different areas, um, you know, and you need to be able to have strengths in those social areas. And... Um, and I think because, um, you know, for some people that, that is a very difficult area. Um, and I've heard a lot of people have, um, have had struggles at work um, due to just some of those nuances. We just interviewed a wonderful woman from Canada, Tarita Davenock, who has uh, uh, all-inclusive uh, type of travel travel for all. Mm -hmm. How is the travel industry down in Australia relative to people with disabilities, whether they be intellectual or physical? To be honest, with four small children, we don't do a lot of travel. <laughs> um, <laughs> well said. <laughs> we have um, gone on holidays um, away from our home. Um, we made the mistake of not double checking that the doors had um, key locks. Um, and uh, we found that um, the back door um, didn't have a key lock on it. So it was just locked from the inside. And so we spent our whole um, two week holiday listening out for children walking out the back door. <laughs> so it wasn't much of a holiday. <laughs> If people want to get in touch with you, Sarah, how do they get in yeah. touch with you? Uh, the best way is probably um, either my website, which is um, www.autismcare.org. -E um, I also have a Facebook page, Autism Care. Um, I'm also on uh, Pinterest and Twitter, but I don't tweet too much. <laughs> What is the main thing you tell employers when you go in there to speak to employers about neurodiversity and autism in particular? No, autism is a fantastic thing. You know, like I look at my, my kids, 
and the people I've met. And part of what makes them so wonderful is some some of the things that can be attributed to autism. You know, that they've got fantastic strengths. Um, you know, I just am baffled by um, how focused some people can be, some of the details that they can um, remember, you know, if, if it's an area of interest, um, just how much information and, you know, how much time they can spend in that, in that area. And, you know, some of these strengths can really, really be beneficial to, to businesses. It can be such a beneficial beneficial thing to have have people that um, are neurodiverse so yeah when you create an instructional program mm -hmm. um, what are some of the principles you employ you know in your instructional design because you're professional at that your background is in that and uh, mm -hmm. to people like myself who are not professional educational designers what kind of tips can you give us for all of us regardless of who we are we all learn differently so some people are very auditory learners some people learn by doing some learn by hearing for a lot of people um you know it's the visual seeing things that can be helpful so when i'm developing resources um i always make sure that my resources cover all those different learning styles so that you know people that who people who are naturally audible learners don't don't get lost in heaps of words just making sure that all the all the um, bases are covered and sh and you have um, a resource that will actually help um, lots of people you mentioned whether some people are auditory some people are visual mm -hmm. and that's why this very interview well, of course, you can watch it in video. You can watch it with or without captions. You can listen to it on a podcast. You can read it in a transcript. You can mm -hmm. look at it or feel it or sense it, however your particular mm -hmm. brain works. And that's, I think that's how we have to approach everything. That everybody's yeah. brain works a bit differently, not necessarily better or worse, just different. And yeah. uh, it's not one size uh, fits all at all. Yeah. Well, it's been such a pleasure meeting you and talking with you. Um, well, as you said, you don't travel much with four kids, but if you get over <laughs> here to Fort Lauderdale, Florida, say hello. <laughs> oh, definitely. Most definitely. <laughs> all right. And yeah, thank you so much. Well, thank you very much. And let's tell our uh, audience once more how they would get in touch with you and see the great things you're doing at Autism Care. Okay, so our website is www.autismcare.org. And uh, we've also got a Facebook page and uh, Twitter feed and all that sort of stuff that you can be directed from our website. Yeah. And we're hoping perhaps you'll do a blog for us at Different Brains and we here at Different yeah. Brains certainly want to mainstream the great work you're doing. And uh, I think it's miraculous that we're able to talk like this and meet. Yeah. And you're all the way in Australia. That's right. I don't think of it as I'm all the way in America. Because yeah. We know that it's Australia that's the one that's far away. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Well, so great to meet you. Keep up the great work you do. Thank you so much for your time. We've had the great privilege today of talking to our friend in Australia, Sarah Collins, www.autismcaer.org. For more information, visit us at differentbrains.com.